So I woke up this morning to an email that I personally am not sure how I want to look at it. Technically, I think it's like a positive thing. It's a good thing. But the, I want to call it the cynical part of my brain, but more, more realistically, the realistic part of my brain knows that it's actually a bad thing. Maybe not for everybody, but possibly for the majority of people right now. So I, um, backstory here, I have an American Express uh, credit card. I used to have the crappiest, crappiest credit in the history of credit scores. Like it was bottom of the barrel kind of um, credit because I did really dumb things when I was 18 and got my first credit card and had no clue exactly how it all worked because they don't teach you about credit in school. They, you know, what any, anyway, that's not the point here. So my very first credit card, I did really dumb things with. I maxed it out in probably two days on a senior trip spring break and it made the minimum payments for the longest time, not realizing that interest and all that other stuff, really I was paying a dollar a month at the end of it towards the principal because interest and everything else almost equated to my actual minimum payment. So I had the worst credit history other things I did throughout my early 20s, mid 20s with the not paying things on time and overspending and going over credit limits and constantly keeping credit cards maxed out destroyed, destroyed my credit, right? And I finally in 30s, early 30s, kind of wised up to the fact that I was basically shooting myself in the foot. Um, but it was helping the credit card companies and everybody else. The only person I was really hurting was myself and my bank account and my credit score and my ability to basically own anything in the future if a credit score was necessary, if I didn't have the cash to pay for it, like a house or a car or whatever else, right? So I started building my credit back up. I got one of those, I don't remember what they're called, but basically you send them like 200 bucks and they send you a visa and you use it um, and they've got the money for it already. So it's not like you cannot pay them back for the credit that you're using. I, I don't know what they're called, credit builder kind of credit card or whatever, but I got one of those through my bank, uh, my bank, Bank of America. And I started building my credit back up, doing all these different things. And then one day my credit got well enough that American Express sent me one of those. You've been pre-approved and I'm like, this sounds too good to be true, but I'm going to fill it out, fill out the little application and see what happens because American Express to me at the time felt like one of those, you've made it girl. You know what I mean? Like you have an Amex. Oh my gosh, you're doing good things. And it felt like if I could get an American Express, it meant that what I was doing to kind of fix my credit was really working and I was making smart choices and they saw it and they wanted to reward me. Right. And so I applied for this American Express and they gave it to me and I was like, oh wow, this is amazing. Well, then I start realizing American Express does like a lot of different things. Um, the, the points you can earn and the way that you can dispute transactions if it's not legitimate. And then I started thinking about the fact that when you use your bank card at places, and I've talked to you guys about this before, when you use your bank card at places, if somebody steals your, your account or steals your card, that is your money they have access to. Whereas if you use a credit card and somebody steals it or gets a number, that's a creditor's money they have access to, not your personal money that you worked your butt off for to put into your account, right? So I started looking at bank cards and credit cards a little bit differently for that reason. So I get this Amex and uh, I use it to pay for everything. I never, ever, ever in life take my bank card with me. It is in my safe. Like I don't take it with me anywhere. I only take my American Express. I use it to pay for absolutely everything. And then I make payments on my Amex weekly, not bi-weekly, not monthly, weekly. I make payments on my Amex, right? Is it the whole amount? No, I always have a running balance on my Amex. It's, it's almost impossible with today's inflation and certain things to not have some sort of small running balance or whatever on, on a credit card, right? Or your, or your um, bank account, you know, getting really close to the bottom there for a lot of people, myself being one of them, depending on the month and depending on what's going on, depending on how inflation is hitting, depending on gas prices, depending on if the apartment decides to jack up the rent, depending on if your car insurance goes up for no apparent reason and no fault of your own, homeowner's insurance, because a hurricane hit over here and a tornado hit over here, so now everybody has to pay more, that, that kind of thing, right? So I get an email this morning from American Express and they say, hey, we've raised your credit limit. And my brain goes, sweet, it's even higher now. Like I have more room if I need to get something big or I need to do something, I have more wiggle room with my credit card because they've given me a higher credit limit. And my initial response is this is great. But then, but wait, <laughs> there's more. My brain goes, no, this is not good because 
for the past, you know, last year we talked about the fact that credit card companies were slashing everybody's um, credit limits. I had an uh, Old Navy account, which is like, dumb, but when school starts back for the kid, they do these whole, you know, use your Old Navy card, get half off your purchases, plus an extra 30%. And you're basically paying like 10% for clothes. So having an Old Navy card made sense for the kid for school. We would go, we would get her clothes, I'd put it on the Old Navy card, save a ton of money for using it, turn around and pay it right off, right? Because it, it, it made financial sense to save that amount of money for the stuff that we we're going to buy. Well, then Old Navy, who I think Barclay bought them, they were owned by somebody else. And then I think Barclay bought them out, them and Gap and um, Banana Republic. And I don't remember who else is with Old Navy. But anyway, they bought them out and they just started for people who were not using their cards on a regular basis. They started slashing people's um, uh, credit lines, right? And mine went from like a thousand dollars to seven fifty. And then the last thing I got from them was like, you don't ever use this. So we've dropped your credit line to a hundred dollars. And then I still didn't use it. And they sent me a, a letter that said, Hey, we've closed your old Navy account through no fault of my own, but because I wasn't using it and they weren't able to make interest off me and everything else, they closed my account. Now my Amex, because I use it for literally everything, they see that they are making some interest off me. Not a lot. Cause I try to make my payments so that interest is not there's not a high enough balance for the interest to offset me, the, the perks of using the Amex, if you will. So when they send this thing that says, hey, we've raised your credit limit, it's because they see how often I use it and they're hoping I'm going to slip up. And the reason I say I, want, I look at this from a cynical but realistic standpoint, there are a lot of families out there who right now may be getting the same email from their Amex, from their Discover, their MasterCard, their Visa, their whatever else is out there. I'm sure there's other things that say, hey, we've raised your credit limit. We see you use your credit card, so we've raised your credit limit. Right before the holidays, right before people feel that pressure that we talked about in yesterday's video to go all out and keep up with the Joneses and really impress people with you know what they can buy them for Christmas or whatever else and how big the spread is on the Thanksgiving table or Christmas table for you know Thanksgiving, Christmas lunch, dinner, whatever else. So you've got these credit card companies right now saying, hey, here's more credit for you. But what I realize what that is going to do is if I still, every once in a while, I still have that the money's burning a hole in my pocket mentality. You know, when you're younger and you get a paycheck or you get money, somebody gives you cash, especially it, it feels like it burns a hole in your pocket and you got to spend it because it's there. You're like, well, I have it means I can use it. There will be a lot of people who have that same mentality with a credit card and especially one that now has a higher limit. Let's say you have a credit card that has a $2,000 limit, right? And you're constantly hitting that limit, like the rev limiter on a, on a car, whatever. You're constantly hitting that limit. You're constantly at the $2,000, which means you don't have any open credit. But it also means it destroys your actual credit score because your debt to, not debt to income ratio, but your, your open line of credit to debt ratio is, is small if you're constantly maxing out your credit cards, right? So it looks really bad. And you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to buy this because I don't have the means for it. I don't have the credit for it. I don't have the money in my bank account for it. So you make budgeting financial smart decisions on not to do this, not to do this, not to do this. Well, then your credit card company sees the holidays coming up. They see that you constantly use this card and that you're constantly getting it close to the whatever. And so then they're like, you know what? We're going to give you a little extra credit. We, we feel you, you've earned it. You deserve it. You whatever, which is probably true. You've probably been making your payments on time and doing all this other stuff. And that's amazing. Good for you. Like legitimately good for you. If you are so my video completely cut off because I have an alarm set so that we can take the kid to school and it just knocked this whole thing out. Anyway, um, for those who are making their payments and able to, you know, do that budgeting, I, I'm extremely proud of you because it is a very hard thing to do. As somebody who has been there, trust me, I fully, fully understand. But I see these credit card companies now giving these people higher credit limits, myself being one of them, and it's right at the holidays. So technically, it's to help them. It's not to help you. It's not to help me. It's not to say, hey, you've done a great job. Here's a little more credit in case you need it. It's, hey, the holidays are coming up. We need people spending, and they're not going to spend if they don't have the money to spend. And the way to give them money to spend is to give them extra line of credit. Make sure they know they can use this credit card to go out and buy all these things because at the end of the day, 
if they overextend themselves with these credit cards and they cannot make those payments and they're only making minimum payments, these credit card companies are going to make buku's but loads of money off of us and in interest rates all right and then you are putting yourself in a worse financial position than you were before they gave you the line of credit before you were budgeting because you knew you couldn't go past this now you see this wide open road of extra credit and for a lot of us i'm not saying just you i'm one of these people as well it, is, it has happened to me where you see that open road of a line of credit and you think to yourself oh well, I can do a little bit more. It'll be okay. I can make that payment. It won't be a big deal. I have 31 days to, you know, make the money to make that payment. And that's how we hurt ourselves in the long run. And that's how we help them in the long run. So I just want to put this out there for everybody. One, try not to use your bank card if you have the ability to use a credit card, but also make sure you're paying off your credit card when you use it. Like, don't let it screw you in the long run. Um, only because I don't trust bank cards at restaurants and clubs and amusement parks and places where anybody could literally swipe it, copy it, whatever, and, and screw you over that way and steal your hard-earned money. Um, but also, do not fall into the trap of, hey, it's the holidays. Here's extra line of credit. Make sure you get something for everybody that you've ever met in your life, every acquaintance, whatever else. Don't fall into the trap because all of you are doing in the long run is helping them and hurting yourselves okay and so when i got the email from american express it was like hey we've automatically increased your line of credit i think that is a bad thing i know that i'm taking care of my stuff but they see me as a possible she she uses it all the time constantly using it so maybe we can get her to do more over the holidays but the automatic increase in a, in a credit card, I feel is very, very detrimental to a lot of people who might not yet have that money saving focus or that pay the bills focus or whatever else. And I worry that credit cards taking it upon themselves to just give you more credit without you requesting it could be a shooting yourself in the foot kind of scenario. You know what I mean? So I just want everybody to, especially over the holidays, we've talked about this already, be very, very mindful and cognizant of what you are spending, where you're spending it, who you're spending it with, who you're spending it on, and how it's going to affect your, your bank account, your pocketbook, your livelihood, your way of living in the long run because you have to take care of you first. If somebody gets a little pissy or bitchy or moany because you didn't buy them a Christmas present, you don't need that person. If somebody's upset because Christmas um, dinner or Thanksgiving dinner doesn't cover the entire table with 50 different foods, you don't need those kind of people and they probably need to eat less anyway. That's what I'm going with. I'm one of those people. I'm like, listen, we only need like four main staples at Thanksgiving because the more stuff we have, the more I eat and I'm continuously gaining weight and we got to stop this. You got to, we got to, eyes bigger than the stomach kind of thing. We got to stop this. That's me personally. And it saves money in the long run too. Saves waistline, saves money. I feel like that's a win-win. Um, but I just wanted to put this out there to you because a lot of people could look at this as a, oh wow, that's great. And the cynical, realistic side of me is going, no, 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 no. They're, they're trying to hurt the American people over the holidays because they know how commercialized it has become and how many of us fall into that trap of got to keep up with the Joneses, got to do what everybody else is doing and whatever else. So just be very cognizant and mindful of one, look at the interest rates. They may be giving you more credit line, but they may also raise your interest rates. Really think about that. And also if you have it, it does not mean you have to spend it. Having that extra line of credit and not touching it is actually better because your, your debt to um, available credit balance looks really, really good when they're far apart. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. So there's that random. I know, but Squirrel Tribe, I wanted to bring this to your attention. I want to make sure you guys are thinking about these kind of things because I don't want to see anybody hurt themselves trying to, I don't want to say impress somebody else, but uh, by helping the credit card companies basically is what I'm going with with that. So I love you all immensely. I hope you all have a fabulous Friday, my dudes, and I will see you again later. Bye.